My analyses of General Grievous will focus specifically on the character as he is presented in Legends continuity, drawing from the Clone Wars micro-series, the Dark Horse comics, the Revenge of the Sith visual dictionary, and the novels Labyrinth of Evil and Revenge of the Sith, ignoring his appearances in the Clone Wars animated series and all of its tie-ins. Grievous, as he is featured in canon, is an ineffectual villain with an extremely inconsistent performance level, more plot device than character. My analyses of Starkiller will be focused specifically on Galen Merrick, the iteration of the character featured in the Force Unleashed 1 video game and all of its tie-ins, most notably the novelization by Sean Williams, the graphic novel by Hayden Blackman, and the Star Wars role-playing game supplement produced by Wizards of the Coast. Though the matter is left deliberately vague within continuity, I firmly regard Starkiller as he is featured in The Force Unleashed 2 as a separate character, the clone of Galen Merrick. This in mind, I will be using Galen Merrick's names and titles interchangeably throughout this video. So with all of that out of the way, let us begin. General Grievous and Starkiller, Pawns of the Sith, two of the most successful Jedi Hunters of their respective time frames. If these two battlefield juggernauts were to meet in single combat, who would win? Originally a Kalish male named Kaimean Jai Shilal, General Grievous was subjected to a complete cybernetic reconstruction, with only his heart, lungs, brain, and spinal column being retained. Essentially a war droid built around a living brain, Grievous's vaguely humanoid chassis was composed of high-density duranium alloy, with an outer covering of energy-dampening armor-plast plating. His tri-jointed legs provided superior mobility, and were highly effective as physical combat implements. His vertically segmented arms could split into an extra set, enabling the multi-weapon proficiency that became his trademark. Grievous's levels of physical performance were intended specifically to rival those of Force-enhanced Jedi. He could move faster than the human eye could perceive, shred metal with his bare hands, and casually lift and throw objects weighing hundreds of pounds. Though he generally favored traditionally humanoid stances and movements, all of his joints possessed an omnidirectional range of motion, which allowed him to perform otherwise impossible maneuvers. Grievous typically leveraged his entire body for complex motions and attacks, coordinating multiple blades in addition to physical combat. This high physical output was reinforced by his durability. By his own estimation, he could withstand a blast from a starfighter's laser cannon, and conventional weapons such as blasters, vibroblades, and electrostabs were basically useless against him. When necessary, he could even tank powerful telekinetic surges. The armorplast plating provided a limited protection against lightsabers, though his vulnerable joints led to multiple limb amputations, and the remaining organs contained within his chest cavity were a vulnerable target and his most consistent weakness. Galen Merrick was a human male born on Kashyyyk, the son of the Jedi Kento and Mali. Kidnapped as a child by Darth Vader, Starkiller spent the following decade as a battered Sith trainee. When his existence was exposed to Emperor Palpatine, Vader was ordered to execute him. Instead, Vader retrieved the near-dead body of his apprentice and subjected him to an extensive surgical reconstruction, augmenting his body. Though the full extent of the modifications are unknown, Galen demonstrated superhuman durability. He was otherwise a typical human specimen, boasting a lean athletic physique. The rigors of Sith training led to a maximized physical performance level, and Starkiller possessed an exceptional blend of strength, dexterity, and agility. His approach was to leverage his strongest attribute down the path of least resistance, meeting hard with soft and soft with hard, reconfiguring based on the opponent. 
He used his strength to shove enemies off balance, his dexterity to subvert their defenses, and his agility to outflank them. Though the apprentice heavily favored lightsaber and force combat, he did employ hand-to-hand -hand grappling techniques against certain opponents. Starkiller was already an exceptional endurance fighter when he was surgically enhanced, having participated in extended sparring matches with Vader, learning to ignore pain, frequently shrugging off superficial lightsaber wounds. His enhanced resiliency was best demonstrated when he survived getting crushed by a multi-ton stone table hurled by Vader's telekinesis, and recovering from his injuries within a week. When he assaulted the Death Star, he wore a utilitarian but unarmored Jedi combat robe distinguished by its white tabard and hood. Starkiller's surgical reconstruction represents a compromise between physical performance and force abilities. Force sensitives subjected to total cybernetic reconstruction, the prime example being Darth Vader, are certainly devastating and highly resilient combatants, but the loss of so much living tissue reduces their overall force potential. The Apprentice's more conservative alterations represents a logical answer to this problem. Grievous, on the other hand, was a non-force sensitive and therefore required a total reconstruction in order to contend with their powers. Quite simply, Grievous outclasses Galen Merrick in all areas, his raw physical performance being directly comparable to the force enhancement of top-tier Jedi Council Masters, and the mechanical features of his droid body providing attack options the most humanoids can't even consider. Starkiller could potentially overcome Grievous through combat skill, as Dooku and Kenobi did, but there is no path of least resistance where he can leverage his strongest attribute. And despite the Apprentice's enhanced resiliency, he simply can't match the sheer hardiness of Grievous's metal chassis, and he has no armor to compensate. Even Grievous's vulnerable organs are still contained within an armored shell, where Merrick is just another squishy meat bag albeit one less squishy than most. Advantage to Grievous. Armed with four trophy lightsabers, General Grievous had been provided with basic training in all seven lightsaber forms by Count Dooku, who encouraged a technical emphasis on Mikashi. Functioning as a combat-oriented Nyman specialist, Grievous would cycle through the various forms, reconfiguring his style on the fly in order to confuse and bewilder his targets. Furthermore, the combat computer slaved to his brain allowed him to analyze and copy the physical techniques of his opponents, adapting to their style, and building a database of additional techniques. Grievous's moveset was, in essence, the attack katas of all seven forms fed into a random number generator, coordinating multiple blades to overwhelm opponents with randomized attack chains. He alternated dual wielding and quad wielding, typically opening with twin lightsabers while keeping the extra set in reserve. His dual saber style paired off heavy power blows with dynamic spins and acrobatics. By contrast, his four-bladed style maintained a more grounded posture while unleashing a rapid-fire Blitzkrieg assault, effectively filling the air around him with plasma. Grievous's adaptive offense combined with his sheer output made him a devastating aggressor, demonstrated when he bewildered Kukruk, overpowered Shakti, overwhelmed Kiadi Mundi, and fought Mace Windu to a stalemate. Much like Dooku, Grievous would use active defense to break the opponent's momentum, setting up for counters, which made engaging him directly near suicidal. However, he was ineffective against more evasive opponents, and his overemphasis on offense left him exposed to counterattack. Both Dooku and Kenobi bested Grievous by assuming defensive stances and forcing the cyborg to chase after him, before suddenly turning around and disarming him.
Armed with a standard Jedi lightsaber fitted with a blue-hued Adegan crystal inherited from his father, Starkiller was provided with basic training in all seven forms by Darth Vader, while dedicating himself specifically to Sirisu, Shien, and Juyo. This complementary array of disciplines covered all of his bases, allowing him to adapt to different combat situations by simply emphasizing different techniques. Starkiller's personal technique and moveset was dynamic yet focused, balancing elaborate blade work with economy of motion. In his footwork, he alternated between stalwart postures and abrupt flanking acrobatics, staying on top of evasive opponents. His offensive component shifted almost seamlessly between the strength-based hack-and-slash of Form 5 and the dexterity-based rapid-fire attacks of Form 7. Similarly, his defensive component blended the passive blocking sequences of Sirisu with the active counters of Shien. He further supplemented his skill set with hand-to-hand -hand grappling techniques and heavy force integration. Galen's tactics were heavily influenced by Darth Vader, and he followed the Sith Lord's standard procedure of using active defense to subvert the opponent, setting up for counters. He would open conservatively to test the waters, adapting and reconfiguring his style based on the opponent. In this manner, he endured Rom Kota's steadfast assault, compensated for his technical inferiority against Jock D by leveraging his strength, while relying on dexterity to deflect Darth Vader's bulldozer assault while slipping in counters. However, his adaptability only went so far, demonstrated in his battle with Kazdan Paradis, who used his mechanical appendages and lightsaber pike to keep the apprentice at bay and dance circles around him. In such situations, Starkiller leaned on his force abilities as an additional attack vector. With their diversified skill sets, both Grievous and Starkiller could be described as exchanging quality for quantity. The Grievous expressed this in a much more literal fashion with his multi-weapon proficiency and armament, where the apprentice was satisfied with the opportunities offered by the single blade. Both built their fighting styles as a rotating wheel of skill configurations, but though Starkiller's skill set was more focused overall, Grievous's technical specialization in Mikashi optimized him for lightsaber dueling, where Galen was a general combat specialist. I find their movesets to be intriguingly similar, mixing strength-based power blows with high-speed rotary spins, but ultimately Grievous's use of dual blades combined with his cybernetic speed and strength affords him a significantly higher performance level. While I can see Galen contending with Grievous's dual saber style, he would be completely overmatched by the quad saber style. Though the apprentice is a capable Sirisu practitioner, his defense is not even remotely comparable to Obi-Wan Kenobi's. Both use active defense to set up for counters, but Grievous' superior strength and extra weapons makes his subversions more effective, and Grievous' similarly exceptional speed means that Galen wouldn't be able to compensate by leveraging his dexterity, as he did against Vader. Starkiller is certainly a gifted swordsman and possesses a well-optimized skill configuration, but he simply isn't developed enough to contend with a high-performance juggernaut like Grievous. Advantage to Grievous As with his lightsaber training, Starkiller's force training was designed to curb over-specialization and to encourage him, or rather force him, to make full use of all of his abilities. The stated goal of Sith training was to allow Darkseid adepts to perfect their power in their own fashion, so Darth Vader was quite hands-off in his training technique, teaching through example rather than instruction. Galen was typically deployed as an assassin, and was an extremely capable covert operative, but he was most at home on the battlefield, unleashing his full power to devastating effect. A telekinetic savant, the apprentice could casually lift and throw objects weighing up to several tons, and reduce Imperial walkers to scrap metal through sheer crushing strength, 
while using a limited form of levitation to rapidly traverse the battlefield. His force lightning was powerful enough to quickly kill organic targets, ignite flammable substances, and overload machinery. Described in the Force Unleashed novelization were his telepathic abilities, which he used to spread terror and confusion on the battlefield. His expert integration of force abilities and lightsaber combat allowed him to wield all of his skills in perfect tandem, while his applications were highly varied and creative. However, Galen was not without his shortcomings. His influence over the physical realm was prodigious, but his ability to contest the power of other Force adepts was negligible. Even low-level Sith acolytes had little difficulty neutralizing his telekinesis, and a rudimentary application of Tutaminus was all it took to blunt his lightning, while his own telekinetic defenses were practically non-existent, and his own use of Tutaminus was extremely circumstantial. Starkiller compensated by leveraging his strength down the path of least resistance, covering his own bases with active defense and evasion, while bypassing the opponent's defenses by cycling through his skills and using the environment as a weapon, reconfiguring his approach based on the opponent. Given how much of an extreme, force-focused combatant Starkiller is, Grievous' ability to engage him is determined by the viability of his anti-force countermeasures, and for this reason I will be proceeding directly into the final verdict. It is only appropriate that the conclusion to a matchup concerning one of the great generals in galactic history conclude with a discussion of his tactics, and make no mistake, Grievous is one of the great generals in galactic history. Top to bottom, the Battle of Coruscant was a terror attack. Grievous dispersed his forces almost randomly, leaving them vulnerable to counterattack while predominantly favoring vulnerable targets. Initially, Republic Star Destroyers caught with their pants down, but quickly shifting over to communication satellites and orbital mirrors, and planet-side pedestrian plazas and shelters. The need to protect civilians prevented the Republic fleet on site from engaging directly, while Grievous had planted mass shadow mines and ambushing warships at hyperlane reversion points to intercept any reinforcements. The objective of abducting Republic Chancellor Palpatine purely expressed Grievous's strategy of making the assault a terrifying spectacle. As Grandmaster Yoda and Mace Windu observed, these terror tactics were learned from Count Dooku. Psychological warfare was General Grievous's first line of defense against Force abilities, using shock and intimidation to break the concentration of Jedi opponents, preventing them from leveraging their powers against him by keeping them off balance. As the apprentice to Darth Vader, who relied on the same tactics, Galen Merrick was clearly familiar with Dun Mok. Not only had he borne the brunt of many psychological battles, but he successfully turned the tables on Vader, getting under the Dark Lord's shell and goading him. This in mind, Grievous is unlikely to raise anything from Starkiller beyond an academic comparison to Vader, leaving Starkiller's force focus unaffected. Furthermore, even if Grievous successfully broke Merrick's composure, he'd simply provoke Merrick's rage and feed his power. Grievous was ultimately a realist, and did develop practical countermeasures for those inevitable instances where opponents did manage to use the Force against him. He typically relied on an active defense, dodging direct Force pushes and waves, and cutting thrown objects out of the air with his lightsabers. Worst case scenario, his robust mechanical body can tank the hits with minimal damage. Most notably, he retracted his arms into his torso and rooted himself to the ground with his magnetic talons to endure Roron Korob's max-level dragon shout. However, there were limits to Grievous's resiliency. Though he could tank broader telekinetic waves, concentrated telekinetic crushes could cause significant damage to his chassis, particularly his vulnerable gut sack. Given that Merrick was capable of reducing Imperial walkers to scrap through sheer telekinetic crushing strength, he does possess the ability to immediately curb-stomp Grievous, 
making him a significant threat. This in mind, Starkiller's efficacy is very much determined by which powers he favors, and this is where I believe that the Apprentice's approach effectively plays into Grievous's hands. As already discussed, Galen Merrick's tactical approach was to open conservatively and assess the threat, cycling through his powers and skills until he finds the most effective attack, and then spamming the hell out of it. If Force Crush is the first thing he tries, then he reduces Grievous to scrap immediately. However, the Apprentice predominantly favors Area Effect Telekinesis and Force Lightning. Lightning is a proven droid killer, and given that Dirge's electrified bolas were effective against Grievous, this ability is an advantage in Merrick's corner. However, it's not an overwhelming advantage due to Merrick's lack of power. When the Apprentice blasted Darth Vader, all he achieved was to make Vader's prosthetics seize up, tripping him up in battle but failing to kill him outright. Furthermore, Grievous has already demonstrated the skill for defending with his lightsabers. In an extended engagement, Starkiller would be able to cycle through his powers and exploit Grievous's weaknesses, but I believe that this battle would actually end very quickly. Unfortunately, his conservative probing approach gives Grievous the opportunity to close in and leverage his similarly overwhelming advantage as a lightsaber duelist. Grievous boasts the same performance advantages over the Apprentice as Kazdan Paradis, keeping opponents off balance with bewildering speed and mobility. However, where Paradis' tactic of keeping enemies at a distance with his lightsaber pike gave Merrick an opening to leverage his force abilities, Grievous's in-your-face approach doesn't have this weakness. Due to his extreme weakness against the force, Grievous's success was almost entirely predicated on his supremacy as a duelist, to the point where he was contending evenly with duelists well above Merrick's level. Starkiller may have soldiered his way to victory against the greats of his era through grit and determination, but he was not truly one of them, owing his success to his ability to capitalize on their weaknesses rather than overcome their strengths. Beyond his vulnerability to the Force, Grievous has no significant shortcomings, outperforming the Apprentice in all areas, leaving him no path of least resistance to follow. One possibility worth considering is Starkiller possessing a pre-existing familiarity with Grievous's style and tactics gleaned through proxy. However, I believe that this would actually work against Merrick, as tricks that work against proxy won't necessarily work against Grievous. Instead of leveraging his Force talents, he'd emulate Obi-Wan Kenobi and attempt to hold out with pure lightsaber defense resulting in a repeat of his initial bout with Darth Vader, where Galen believed he had his opponent's measure, only to be staggered back by Vader's terrifying mechanical strength. Merrick simply wouldn't have a chance to integrate force attacks when Grievous is hammering on him with two or four blades, and breaking off would be exceedingly difficult due to Grievous's mobility and speed. A good visual analog for a hypothetical battle between General Grievous and Starkiller would be the final bout between Darth Malgus and Kaosan Durach at the tail end of the return trailer. Durach as Starkiller would open with his force abilities and try to pummel this opponent from a distance, but Malgus as Grievous would successfully defend and close in, immediately staggering back the Jedi with sheer speed and strength and simply pounding Merrick into submission. I declare General Grievous the victor. And now to the post-mortem analyses, where I provide my assessment of both combatants and where they stand relative to other fighters. Starting from the top with General Grievous, I rate him as possessing a Tier 1 physique, baseline superhuman. His body is literally made out of metal and designed for hard combat. His strength, speed, and agility were specifically intended to contend with the enhanced physical performance possessed by powerful force wielders. His heavy-duty duranium chassis and external armor plast plating made him almost indestructible, 
and worst case scenario, he could shrug off the loss of limbs. As a lightsaber duelist, I rate Grievous as a Tier 2, best that can be achieved through pure developed skill. High performance offensive duelist who employs a generalized skill set as a rotating wheel of skill configurations, cycling through techniques and even copying the opponent's fighting style. However, his success is predicated on cybernetic enhancement rather than force enhancement, so his performance level is capped. As a force wielder, Grievous is a tier 7. Non-force sensitive, no powers whatsoever, viability determined by his ability to subvert the force through mundane means. Overall, I rate Grievous as a tier 2.5. He enjoys a near-total supremacy in physical combat courtesy of his robot body, and his expert-level lightsaber skills enable him to contend even with reigning swordmasters, but he is badly hampered by his lack of force abilities. He relies on strategic planning and psychological warfare to compensate, creating the circumstances necessary to defeat even Jedi Council Masters. Moving on to Galen Merrick, I rate him as possessing a tier 1.5 physique, partially augmented human, baseline human physiology and peak human performance level, but his body has been surgically reconstructed, enhancing his durability and tolerance for injury. Not truly superhuman, but a significant cut above. As a swordsman, Merrick is a tier 3, but the sort of Tier 3 that I describe as a Tier 2 in the making. Most duelists who peak out as Tier 3s employ extremely focused and singular fighting styles, dominating by leveraging their strongest attribute. Where Merrick does employ the layered style and reconfiguring tactics of a Tier 2 like Obi-Wan Kenobi or Shock T, he's simply restricted by his lack of developed skill. For many of the same reasons, Merrick's Force talents also fall under Tier 3. A broad skill set and major environmental influence, but compromised by his inability to overcome the powers of other Force wielders. Extremely viable strategically, compensating by using his surroundings as a weapon, but weak defensively. Again, a Tier 2 in the making held back by lack of development. Merrick has an overall rating of Tier 3, Determined by his lightsaber skills and force abilities. In many ways, Starkiller represents the peak of what can be achieved purely through experience with minimal training. He's underhanded and opportunistic with a high performance level, but he lacks substance. As visually impressive and destructive as his powers may be, the Apprentice's success is ultimately predicated on his ability to exploit the opponent's weaknesses by reconfiguring his approach. In this manner, he has defeated several fighters above his own level, but at the end of the day, when he's outclassed, he's outclassed. For all of their differences, Grievous and Starkiller have a common emphasis on adaptability and subversion, which they rely on to compensate for their weaknesses and enable themselves to contend with opponents above their own level.